In the war family household, there was four boys. Mum and dad were, were keen sports people. They were tennis players and squash later on. But whatever was going, we were playing. There was you know cricket, uh, football, rugby. Whatever we could get our hands on a ball, we'd, we'd play a game. And uh, we're at the backyard sort of every afternoon, school holidays. It was sport non-stop. In Australia, it really is the culture. And, and you get out in the backyard, you play with the family. Uh, and it's very much sports orientated. There's a lot of coaching at school and great facilities. Um, and eventually, well, I guess we developed and we went towards um, cricket and football. At the age of 16 or 17, I had to make a choice between which one I wanted to take up. It's always hard looking back at a career to, to nominate one you know, moment as a special highlight. Having said that, it's always at the moments where you're up against it and people don't expect you to win. You overcome some obstacles to get there. So probably for me, the 1999 World Cup in, in England, where we were struggling a bit early on, we had to win seven matches to win the tournament. We went in as pre-tournament favourites, so it was a bit of extra pressure. And then to come through at the other end and play a perfect game at Lords against Pakistan in the final was really the ultimate. So I look back on that as, as a really fond memory, not only as a player, but as a captain and, and achieving something against the odds. To win 16 test matches in a row was before our team achieved it was pretty much um, thought was impossible because it's, it's very difficult to win one test match, let alone 16 in a row. But we just got the momentum happening and we played at a very fast pace. We, we tried to pressurise opposition, that was the way we played in that era was to try and win the game as quickly as we can. Often we won the toss and bowl first which was against convention but it really was to take weather out of the equation and to really try and disorientate the opposition by playing with such intense pressure that they weren't sure where they were. And once we started winning a couple of games, the momentum caught on and we just thought, well, why not try and win every game we play? And all of a sudden we got to 16 test matches. Ash's success for not the players is, is very satisfying, but more so for the, the spectators. And particularly in Australia, I think we as a nation gauge our worth on how we go in the sporting field. And when we lose to England, everyone's depressed and we don't want to talk about cricket. And, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like, um, you know, everyone buys into the argument and everyone becomes a selector and how can we fix it? Then when we win, everyone's happy about it and we think it's, it's always going to be that way. So it really lifts the spirits of all Australians. As a player, the Ashes is the ultimate. The secret to any sort of leadership is to uh, not pretend you know everything, to, um, to, to listen to the people around you. Um, I think good leaders um, sometimes just naturally lead without knowing they're leading. So it's sometimes about body language, the way they act, the way they interact with people. Not so much about the great speeches, I mean that can be part of it. But um, and I think also to treat people equally but differently, particularly in a team environment where you've got different personalities. You've got to let them show their own personality at the same time they've got to be focused on what the team needs. So there's a fine balance there. Um, and trust the people around you and, uh, and don't pretend you've always got the answers because you generally haven't.